Hey everybody, I'm John. I collect cards. Hope you're all doing well. It is the end of the day Thursday between, oh, it's about 5.30 actually, and uh, we, uh, my brother and I, my brother's here with me here at the National. Um, we both uh, just checked into uh, the hotel just a, just a short time ago, and uh, we're getting ready to, um, taking a quick breather, then going to hop over to the uh, YouTube uh, content creator event, but um, I'm sure it's going to be a blast. I'll take, uh, I'll try to maybe get some pictures from that too, but uh I'll turn the phone around here shortly and show you the four cards I picked up today uh, on day two, technically the national day one for me. Um, and it was overall was good and uh, a lot of fun. And um, yeah, overall was good. And I, I, liked, uh, I liked the pickups I got. So hang on a second, and I'll show you what I got. Oh, Hey everybody again I'm coming at you here from my uh from my uh lair if you will in the basement of home. Uh it is Saturday night when I'm recording this. I've been home um uh all day from the national. I got home late last night Friday night. I was there uh in Cleveland for 2 days and it was two I mean two absolute fun days, great days and I had some I thought I came away with some really good pickups. But it was a busy 2 days. Um I will I I don't know if I would if I um, in future future years, I'm not sure if I try to cram everything in two quick days with one night in the hotel. Um, you know, I had a four hour drive at dawn, starting at dawn Thursday morning, got there just before 10, was able to catch the shuttle at my hotel to get to the show. Um, had an awesome day there, met my brother shortly after it opened on Thursday, who came in from New York and we had a great two days. Um, and then uh, Friday uh, early evening, about 7.30 or so, I uh, headed home and uh, for another four-hour drive or so. So um, definitely t packed in uh, a lot of activity, I guess, and a lot of time in the car. But um, at the same time, um, it was, a, it was a, great, uh, a great national for me. It was so fun catching up with so many people, meeting many again, uh, and then meeting many also for the first time um, in terms of um, uh, other YouTube content creators or just other folks. Um, in Cleveland who um, maybe don't have channels, but uh, I had the opportunity to meet, had some great, great conversations with dealers as well. So it's just a really, really fun time. And so I'm going to try to, um, going to try to run through my pickups um, as quickly as I can, because I don't want to, I don't want to go in too many different directions here and try to keep this, uh, keep this recap as succinct as possible. But uh, gosh, it was just, there was so much going on. And it was, you know, it was, Friday was packed. Friday was definitively packed. The line, You may have seen some video footage of the line, because I had general admission to get in both days. Um, and the line was long. Um, I mean, it was, you know, not, not like the, like, hardest wait to get into something ever. But it was a long wait to get in. And the line was impressive, to say the least. But, and then once you're in, you know, it's, uh, it was buzzing for sure there was a palpable buzz on friday and a definite one on thursday as well but uh friday was really crowded i would say overall the layout of the show i thought was good a little bit less floor space than in chicago um chicago the the one at stevens convention center uh, just outside chicago near the airport uh is just massive and that's where it'll be i believe for the next three years um hope to get to next year's as well it's such an awesome experience um and uh, but with that in mind, let me run through um, just some. I mean, it was like it was great pickups, but also just fun little. Things. Just I got it was just great seeing so many people, including Wade Boggs fan gave me his card. Got a few channel pickups of card of uh, channel uh, cards, so love that. Thanks, John. Also, uh, cross paths with um, Jake. Legends never die. Gave me this really cool 56 inspired card, even with his softball stats, I think, maybe on the back. Super fun. Um, and uh, if you didn't catch uh, the style of John's card, 1967 tops. So super cool there. Also got cards from, uh, let's see, got a Transigram card style from Sammy Thunder. Very cool on that one. Also got a cool sticker from him. 
And then I got something from Eddie's Cardboard Chaos as well. So thanks guys for the goodies there. Um, and then um, my brother uh, actually came um, and uh, you know when, when we crossed paths and then we, we were sort of got back to the hotel later, um, uh, he gave me a couple of cards that were to me, they I consider them pickups um, all over again in some ways. First off, this card, 1974 Carl Yastrzemski. This was probably the last card of like the original, I call them like original vintage pickups. And, you know, 74 is barely vintage, but it is. Um, I picked this up. This was among, say, the 10 or 12 um, or like cards I w bought when I was just getting into vintage in the late 1980s, early 1990s. Um, probably 89 to 91, somewhere in that period. This was one of those cards I bought. And so I really just like seeing it again. Uh, Frank, my brother Frank found it and brought it with him. So thanks, Frank, for bringing this along. And I just, you know, it's cool because I completely forgot, you know, what it looked like in, in terms of potential condition and everything. And, you know, I'm not going to grade it, um, but a really nice card. So super cool to have that all over again. And then he also brought, this was really cool, um, so we, you know, we probably opened in packs probably four or five Ozzy Smith rookies over the years there, or, you know, in the, in 1979. And, um, he, um, gave me one of them as well, because he's, he has, uh, he's sort of the, uh, the, the overseer of our, uh, kiddom, uh, pack rips and all those cards. So, so he brought me an Ozzy rookie. So that was cool. Um, just cool, very cool to have. So Frank, thanks again for those. And then he um, also uh, put a couple of, uh, I believe put a couple of coins in um, uh, Scott Reindeer Studios' vending machine at the Thursday night YouTube event, which I'm going to touch on in a sec. And uh, he got one, he got a Roger Maris card for one of the cards he got. He gave it to me. So thank you again, bro. And thank you, Scott, for the awesome artwork. Super cool, super fun. Love having that. And... One more, uh, one more awesome, like, I'm considering it a pickup in a way, even though it was a card I had, and then I didn't have it for, like, maybe three weeks, and now I have it again, and it's so much better. Uh, I cross paths with, um, well, cross paths with so many people, but, um, I saw Dylan, Double D Vintage, uh, you know, baseball cards, uh, on the show floor briefly on Thursday, and then at the YouTube event, he gave me this, and I absolutely love this. This is so awesome. So, Dylan, thank you for um, giving me the um, the double D treatment on this. This is a really cool Zion case. I think they call it Mag Pro. Is that what the, the style of this is? I'm not exactly certain, but the clarity of this slab is really good. So, I am now tempted to, at some point, go out and buy my own stash of these for maybe like something like... You know, my Aussie rookie that I would never grade um, with a grader would still look so cool in one of these. So I'm I'm tempted to go down that road maybe and for a few of my um, um, raw cards, ungraded cards. This looks great. He gave it a three, as you can see there. I figured it would be nothing better than a VG. And I was totally looking forward to Dylan's grade as well as just having uh, having this in his... Uh, in his um, slab with his own custom label. So I just absolutely love this. Dylan, thank you again for this. Super cool. Um, so now I'm going to sort of segue into the, um, you know, dealer table pickups I made. Um, but first off, I'm going to really quickly just touch on my uh, arrival there. So on Thursday, again, the sh I was able to catch the shuttle bus to the IX Center and saw the line of cars trying to get in. And... The shuttle bus kind of just dropped us off randomly off to the side eventually, and we walked the rest of the way and, you know, got in. The wait wasn't nearly as bad Thursday as it was Friday. Um, but right when I got in, after I got my bracelet and was in the show floor, on the show floor, all of a sudden I hear a voice, very familiar voice, and turned to my right, and there was Orlando, uh, a collector's dream, talking to someone. So I quickly shook Orlando's hand, said hello. Um, and then, gosh, two minutes later, I'm kind of in the, uh, walking through the, uh, food court area kind of seating area um, I saw Theo Clemente collector I saw John 3d 80s kids said hello to them um, 
and then kind of, uh, you know, it was the first time I got to meet John, which was, uh, so it was great to cross paths with him finally. And then uh, Theo, I met uh, at a couple of other events. I met him in Strongsville. I met him at the National last year. So great to see him again. And then um, not long after that, probably five, ten minutes later, is before my brother uh, had shown up. He was probably about an hour or so behind me coming from New York. Um, I saw uh, Greg from Midlife, uh, Midlife Cards and um, Darren from Return to Collecting. And we walked the floor together for maybe a good 20 minutes or so. And uh, had a blast catching up and just talking a little bit. So, just really enjoyed that, uh, you know, time, you know, m meeting other YouTubers. And that was all within the first hour. So, my Thursday got off to a really good start, I thought. And then not long after that, um, I, I, I soon made my first purchase. And so, some of these purchases, um, so overall I made nine pickups. Eight cards and then one other item that I'll show. And three of the cards I uh, did drop off at SGC for grading at the end of my day on Friday. So, um, uh, but and the first one, I'm going to try to do this in the order of the pickups I made. And I didn't jot them down, so I'm trying to go in by memory here. Um, but the first one I made was this one right here that you're seeing in a photo. Uh, it's a 1951 Bowman Casey Stengel. Um, this card was on my... Um, VCP want list for some time. It's been it's been on my mind to get for I'd say over a year. Um, you know, if you've watched my videos from time to time, you might have an idea that I I just I kind of have a thing for manager cards. I just like the uh, the general the generational aspect of what they do and uh, and what they did. And so uh, I picked that up. I thought for a decent price. Uh, I got it for so I had a one card that I sold. Uh, to offset, um, so I, I got it for 60 plus a 1950 Bowman Mel Parnell in a 2.5, <laughs> uh, in an SGC 2.5, so I got it for roughly, well to me I got it for about 60, but um, in terms of the cash that I exchanged, I got it for probably about 80, uh, I guess you could say in the end, um, which is probably, oh, you know, it's, to me I bought it, so I bought that uh, Mel, a Mel Parnell um, which actually I, if I find a photo for it, I'll actually sh will have shown it already on the screen. Um, I bought it in a PWCC auction and as soon as I got it, I'm like, why did I buy this card? I'm just not interested in it. <laughs> uh, I only got it because it's card one in the set and at, on, on one of those weekly auctions I was doing, it was going for really cheap and so I got it for a pretty good price and, but I just wasn't interested in having it once it arrived. So, um, so I, it was nice to be able to use that to help offset uh, something I really wanted. So, uh, But I picked up that Casey Stengel and dropped it off at SGC. Look forward to getting that grade, uh, hoping I can come back as a uh, EX maybe. So, but I picked that up and then the next card, or the next, yeah, the next pickup I made was actually turned out to be the biggest per the biggest purchase of the uh, all two days. The, the full two days was the biggest purchase I made. It was one of the the three real big targets I went to the show uh, with in mind. Um, I would say those three targets were the 1954 Red Heart Stan Musial, which I'll tell you right now I did not come home with. <laughs> I only got to see two, I only saw two of them, maybe three, um, the whole time over two days. I wasn't there Wednesday, so maybe there were more Wednesday and they moved on Wednesday possibly, but I saw uh, only a, a poor, like one and one uh, as a one in poor, and it was a pretty poor, poor one. <laughs> it wasn't very good. Um, and then the other one was an authentic trimmed. And so I was just, you know, wasn't interested in either. And my budget was already kind of, you know, to the point where I wasn't going to really be able to pick that one up because I saw them like on, I think I saw one end of day Thursday, the other on Friday. And by then I had already picked this one up. So I wanted to get this on camera. This was one of the other uh, two real targets on my um, on my uh, national uh, you know trip for this year. Uh, this 1935 uh, Diamond Star Bill Dickey. So I got it in a PSA four. It's a bit of an older flip. Um, so at some point I might put this. Uh, I might reholder this at some point. Um, but I just uh, really uh, I just really love this card. Um, I'll turn it around really quick. So if you're familiar with Diamond Stars, they um, 
pub, you know, printed these from 34 to 36, 1934 to 36. Uh, this is a 35 because it has his batting average from 34 on the back. Um, card number 11, 1 to 24 were printed in 1934. So those are kind of the first run. So this is a second run example. Um, had it listed for this. I got it for 260, which is right in line of uh, right now um, VCP average for this. So I got a I got a pretty nice deal on it. And I thought a little over 10% off. Um, the dealers were really good people. I had a great conversation with them, kind of looking at their cards. and some really good stuff. Um, and I offered to give him a shout out and he actually politely declined and said no need or anything like that. So just uh, it was a real, you know, those kinds of experiences add to the um, the enjoyment and reward of having a card like this to knowing you got it from, you know, through a good uh, transaction where both sides felt pretty good overall and just, you know, enjoy the enjoy talking baseball cards for a few minutes. So I absolutely love this card. The Art Deco-ness of it, New York on his jersey, Hall of Famer Bill Dickey, Yankee legend catcher, um, just a really cool card. So from those, uh, I mean, from that Yankee dynasty in the mid to late 30s. So really just, this looks good. I It's got this fisheye here that, you know, is sort of, you know, got a, you can't get perfection. <laughs> You're not going to get perfection in a four, not even close, of course. So a little off center left, but yeah, this is a. This is a pretty nice card. Really like it, and I was happy to be able to pick this one up. So, got my Bill Dickey. Um, the third main target um, that I was trying to track down, I'm trying to actually remember what it is, I'm kind of spacing out on. Oh, Jimmy Fox. So, I did not pick up a Jimmy Fox card. I saw both examples that I was looking for. It was a 40 play ball and a uh, 34 batter up. Um, I left Thursday with the possibility of getting a 40 play ball. Um, uh, but I I uh, slept on it, and then it turned out Friday I found a, another card that um, I couldn't believe I was actually able to get, which I'll show in a moment. So in the end, I didn't get a Fox card, but I, I think in the end the batter up is really on my radar for in the future because it's just a really cool card. I think I want to get a batter up someday, and that will be the person to get. Um, but let me show first the last two pickups I made on Thursday. So I, and this was from a dealer that um, I actually made a, a deal with. Uh, he was at the Kalamazoo card show back in, oh gosh, April or May. May, I think it was. Tony from Fat Daddy Sports Cards in the Chicago area. A real nice guy. Um, and I didn't realize it was the same guy until after we were um, making a deal on two cards. And one of them was this, for this really, really nice eye appeal 1968 tops Pete Rose in a two PSA two. Um, he had it listed for 30. I got it for 25, I believe. Um, and then the other card I got from him was I'm gonna have to show a picture of it because I um, I'll take Rose away for a second. Um, was a 1954 Bowman early win. Uh, I'm gonna put that up there now. Um, it looks really, really nice on the front. Um, it does have, it was like a scrapbook card or something because it has some tape marks or paper um, kind of uh, marks on the um, on the back. But the front of the card looks really, really good. And so I kind of sacrificed on a grade for this one example of, um, uh, which adds to my 54 uh, Hall of Famer goal, an overall goal. Um, cause I'm trying to, cause the, which the Red Heart Musical would be part of as well. Um, but the, I was able to add one to that goal, uh, through, it's my seventh card of the 14 card goal. And he had it for 15. I got it for 10. So between the rows and that early win, I got these two for $35. And I thought that was a really good deal because the eye appeal on both of them are fantastic. Um, and regarding the win really quick. I'm happy to, I'm totally fine with sacrificing grade on that one for a really good looking front and a, being able to maybe, you know, later move, you know, the 30, say, extra bucks that a nice VGEX or even EX early win, take 30 more dollars that probably would have cost me 
you know, to get that one and put it toward like the Pee Wee Reese or the Roy Campanella that I still need to get. So that was kind of my thought there because I was just surprised when I saw that card. I'm like, oh my gosh, this card looks fantastic on the front, as does this Pete Rose. And so, um, I mean, you have to look really hard to find the issues on this card, and I don't think they're going to come up on here. The, here's the biggest one right here. Actually, you can see it. The lights above me are actually the, the lights I have in, in my basement uh, kind of, uh, this is a, it was a former like shop space, so it's unfinished storage now. Um, you know, the former owner years ago used it as like a shop, but, um, and so it's got, you know, it works really well with sound in here too. That's why I do my, all my um, camera, off camera sound and stuff. I do it from here. Um, but it's got that scratch right here that you could see. So that's that's the most like immediate flaw you can find. There's also a really subtle creasing in here in a couple of areas, but gosh, it's really hard to pick up. So I think you could sort of see one over there. Maybe, yeah, sort of see one there. I think there's one other one that I won't even bother trying to show you because I honestly can't remember where it is. I mean, the back of this card too just looks good. Eye appeal. This, this might be one of the best eye appeal cards low grade awesome eye appeal cards that i picked up i picked up a nice bowman 55 al k line earlier this year and a two as well this one actually i think is even better in terms of eye appeal for a low grade i don't know if that dot there is a print dot or if it's like paper loss on his sleeve so that could also be another issue as well but my goodness i absolutely love picking this up i didn't have a 60s pete rose card until now so um, I just love these because still got the old old school Reds jersey going with the with the old style hat too. They were still playing at Crosley Field then. This is probably a spring training shot, but still love picking this one up. So for a good price. So that ended my day Thursday, um, and I'm gonna try to. I know these uh, recaps can go away. I'm already over 20 minutes. I see, but uh, so Friday, Friday I picked up. Uh, I had five pickups, four cards. And the first one I picked up was the surprise of, it was the surprise pickup of the show. Um, so, you know, I didn't, I didn't, able, I wasn't able to get a Jimmy Fox um, in, in the end. I could have, I could have. But when I saw this next card I'm about to show, well, I'll just show it now. Here it is. Let's just say I did not think I was going to be heading home with a Hank Greenberg of any kind. Um, and he's not on my he was not on my radar uh, in any way because I thought he was sort of out of my reach. His cards are pricey. Um, he's you know he's a tough get in, for any of his cards. Um, and you know this is not a great three, but it's a 1939 play ball Hank Greenberg. I mean I absolutely love this card. The um, so the 40 play ball Jimmy Fox that I was mostly focused on. Um, cause I didn't see the batter up Fox until later Friday after I even picked this one up. Um, but the Fox 40 play ball that I saw end of day Thursday had some writing right over here, a very slight writing, but still enough for it to be a graded of a, it was graded a two by SGC. And I just, I just didn't want the writing piece just kind of got to me. I just didn't want to get a card with writing on it. I already did that recently with a, um, a Willie Mays, uh, card that I just uh, sent to SGC at the show as well. And. You know, I absolutely love the card I got of that, but I don't, I want to keep those um, those examples to an absolute minimum. Um, it's just the writing uh, is, a, is a flaw that is one of the ones I really um, try to avoid it whenever I can. Staining though, you know, I can live with this. It doesn't go onto the actual card. It's only on the border. It's still a pretty nice image of Hank. I, what I really like have why another reason why I really love having this you know he's a native New Yorker he grew he was, in, he was born in New York um just uh I mean god his numbers were absolutely sick this guy was an amazing hitter for such as you know he could have done the stats he could have still racked up you know for, you know if not for the service oh my gosh what a career this guy had there's you know some of the some of his offensive numbers are just mind-boggling um, you know, Ruth Garrig, yes, of course. I mean, he is right there. Fox, too. Um, but if I can't have, I didn't get a Jimmy Fox, you know, a big reason was, the main reason was because I bought a Hank Greenberg, which I am absolutely thrilled to have. So, again, not an awesome three, but awesome enough for me. Um, this last flaw down here, 
almost looks like it's like clipped. It's a really like the way the corners angled. I thought I'd mention this on here. I think on magnification, I think someone just literally had their thumb on the corner and sort of smushed it. So it's like you could sort of see the um, wrinkles or crease, not creasing, but more like there's just sort of the paper layers sort of smushed together a little bit. So I think someone just had their thumb on the corner firmly is what they did on that. And that's why it kind of just looks like that. There's the back of it. You could, it's a little more easy to see there. Um, I think it's, so it's not really missing. It's more just like smushed in. Um, but overall, the fact that, you know, I passed SGC muster to get a three. So clearly it's probably not like missing, so to speak. But absolutely love this pickup. So I got that. And then these last cards might be a little out of order in terms of when I show them, in terms of when I pick them up. Um, but I also uh, picked up, right after that, I picked up yet another 1939 Playball. Playball was my thing in the show. I ended up with three Playball cards um, at this uh, at this show. The last one you'll see uh, shortly because I picked it up. It was my last pickup. But I picked up this 1939 Playball Leo DeRocher. Uh, I got it for 25 I should add the Greenberg. I wanted to mention price on the Greenberg in case you're curious. Um, the Greenberg was it was in this bag, so we had it for two hundred. I got it for one eighty, um, which you know it's again not a great three, but it's well under the three average currently for an SGC three. So again, it's just he had it priced uh, priced to move, and I got it at, for even better than that. So I was that's what caught my attention, just seeing that pr that sticker on it. That's why I started looking at it, and the next thing I know, I walked away from the table with it. Uh, but this DeRocher. Um, this gives me now um, kind of my goal of having a DeRocher card from the 30s, the 50s, and the 70s. That was kind of a goal of mine, and I wasn't expecting to get this. Um, and I still might get his Gaudi rookie someday. Uh, his 33 Gaudi is sort of still on my want list. I still want to maybe pick that up. But what I really love about this card, and I probably won't grade it because it does have, it's got this little crease there. And it has a really, really, it's a little subtle, but you can sort of see there's something wrinkly. There's like a wrinkle going all the way across, it appears. But it's a pretty nice card. I got it for 25 But this was his first year as a, as a manager. 1939, he was a player manager for the Dodgers. And it was really his last year as a player where he played almost every day. I think he played about 100 and. 10 or 15 games and had about had over 400 plate appearances i looked that up before i hit record so it was his last like full season so to speak as a player um and he had a good season actually hit like 270 um just a really cool picture of him i, I just i don't know i'm a leo de Rocher fan i don't know why i just kind of am he's a he's such an interesting um character in baseball history and he's been a part of a lot of important things in his in baseball and one other cool thing about this card, so this is his first year as a manager. He managed in parts of five different decades, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Simply awesome. Not too many others have done that. Connie Mack won. You know, there's maybe there could be another one there, but uh, McGraw didn't. McGraw maybe touched four decades, if I had to guess. Maybe only three. Um, but just really cool. Tony La Russa probably touched at least four. <laughs> for all I know, he's done he's done five as well, for all I know. In fact, he probably has since he just did the White Sox. Pretty cool stuff. So I picked that up for 25 bucks, And then I've got three more things to show. So um, uh, mid, midday Friday, I um, came across... I was at the near the eBay area, and... It was almost 1 o'clock, and I saw that Reggie Jackson was going to be interviewed by Golden Auctions folks uh, at the eBay Live booth. And so I had like 10 minutes to spare to 1, and so I just went up into the uh, – they had a little bleacher set up there. And uh, I went ahead and uh, watched that and just sort of took a break from walking the floor and really had fun seeing that. Uh, it was cool to see Reggie kind of up close, took some pictures, um, sharing one here. And um, so not long after that – not long after that, I you know walked uh, a little bit more. I was almost done with my buying. I figured I had one more, one more good, good size purchase in me for a card, and 
within like one long table run by two different they were two different dealers who kind of went in on like you know a long you know two table kind of thing so on one end of the table here's my non-card pickup i came away with this awesome uh yankee um they called it a sketchbook it's really a yearbook um from 1952 50th season in the american league I think this is just, this was cool. He was, I was thumbing through this a little bit. He took it out of here and we were carefully thumbing through the pages. It's in pretty good condition, actually. Um, you know, from a, you know, person who wouldn't like, you know, grade these things. To me, this is in great condition. And um, I got it for, he had it listed for 45. I got it for 35. And I might do a future video on this where um, maybe I'll have a 52 tops Yankee card or two uh in the background and maybe flip through a couple of pages in this because this is a pretty cool cool program or pretty cool yearbook so absolutely love picking this up so um but i got that and uh you know what i really like about it too is that you know they were reigning champs in 50 after 51 and then they won again in 52 and uh it's you know their 50th season in the american league and 52 being a card fan if knowing that that's you know the big big debut for for real for tops cards so that's just i just love picking that up and then on the other end of the table you know i think maybe maybe the reggie jackson thing was you know kind of you know sometimes there's just weird coincidences this card called to me this card called to me and uh, i picked it up it, and, and i got it for a really nice price i got a 1970 top super of reggie jackson in a psa 8 it's got one one little blemish here that i can't tell if it's on like the little like shrink wrap baggie that it's in or if it's on the card itself it is an older uh an older flip but you know i don't know the, the ins and outs of the gradings of these this is on the actual slab this is a scratch on the slab right there um i may i may actually reholder this someday um because it is fairly old but I just love the I just love the portrait. I love the picture. Absolutely love it. Second year Reggie Jackson in Yankee Stadium. So it's like his present at the time and his future. Um, and it's the old Yankee Stadium too, which is kind of cool. Look how young he is there. Just I just absolutely love this. Here's the back. It uh, mimics the 1970 back. Off center on that as well. But that wasn't really a okay. You can, and you can see some more scratching on the slab. But I just love picking this up. Uh, he had it for... I have the bag for this one. I can get it out. This other bag. I know this video is starting to run long. So if you're still with me on this, I really appreciate it. But, you know, the National deserves a lengthy recap, right? He had it listed for 150 I got it for 125 So, which again, compared to VCP average, was a, a very fair offer. Overall, I found... I found deals were to be uh, were readily available and easy to be made. Um, Strongsville, sorry for the glare there. Strongsville was a little tougher to make deals. I found the national the dealers were they were ready to deal, um, and I imagine they still are with one day to go here in the show. I'm recording this on Saturday night, but I absolutely love picking this up. Um, I went into the show. Um, my one target I had actually was a 71 top super of pete rose which i really like i love that image i'll take this away now but uh i came away with my first super and it's this amazing reggie jackson which i absolutely love so you know maybe in, maybe i was meant to get it so just given i saw the guy you know in the flesh uh about an hour before so um the last card i picked up at the show um right before i went to the sgc booth was one i looked at earlier um in the uh earlier that day and I finally thought to myself, you know what, I may have just, even after I got that Reggie, I still had a little bit of budget left. And I'm like, you know what, I could, they could wrap it up or I could maybe get this last card I saw. And I ended up deciding, you know what, it's been on my VCP want list since I started the want list almost a year ago now. Or about ten months or so, or eight, nine months. Um, and here it is. I took a picture of it because it's at SGC. It's a 1940 Playball Red Roughing. I got it for 50 bucks he had it listed for 60 i got it for 50 um hoping it'll come back a four i think it's got a decent chance to come back a four so 
Um, really like that card, and uh, it's just the um, it's just a cool example of you know from that Yankee dynasty. He's a Hall of Famer. Um, he's uh, you know he's his stats aren't like super robust. I'd say he's sort of in the uh, Jack Morris uh, camp in terms of Hall of Fame starting pitchers. There are better starting pitchers in the Hall of Fame, but uh, Red Ruffing won you know he won some uh, World Series titles um, and was a key starter on those. Uh, those championship Yankee teams in the 30s. So um, that was the last pickup I made at the show. And I'll put a couple of cards here to uh, as we wrap things up. It's quite possible I missed an element of my national experience that I just forgot to mention just now. I don't really have, uh, can't really get the grades on the, on the screen here. But uh, I'll end it with these two here just kind of in, in the shot. Overall, just had a, another another uh, fantastic Nationals. My second one, um, I really wanted to get this recap in tonight because um, I know there's going to be more coming. And um, I didn't get to do one while I was there. Like you saw at the beginning for me, I did a brief bit from the hotel room thinking maybe I'd do a Thursday night recap after the uh, YouTube event. It just didn't happen. Um, but I wanted to get this done now and uh, basically say that, uh, gosh, 2024 National... I had a ton of fun, and I think it was a success. Um, did not, again, did not think I'd be coming home with a Hank Greenberg of any kind uh, anytime soon. And lo and behold, here it is. So really happy about that and love getting this Bill Dickey um, and, and the Reggie that I just showed before, and, and really all of them. Um, I'm really happy with the pickups I made here. So um, if you were able to make it to the National, I hope you had success as well. If you are still there and heading there for one last day tomorrow, Sunday, one of them recording this about it's about nine nine thirty on Saturday night. Hope you find some great last uh, hours deals. And uh, gosh, I can't wait next year. I hope to do both Strongsville and the National again. We'll see. Um, it is a bit of a you know a commitment there to make that happen. Um, but uh, you know what? Two last little things. Um, I'm going to show a quick photograph. It's not a great quality photo, but here's a preview of a photo or of a card of the card that I hope to get next year, either at Strongsville or at the national. All right. You probably could see what it is. Um, hoping to get that one next year. That's my main target already for 2025. And, and, uh, a few days back, I actually, um, put a little poll question on given the show, the national was in Cleveland and the rock and roll hall of fame is in Cleveland. And, just made me think of the uh, first two albums I bought 40 years ago in 1984. What were they? Um, the answer is, yep, those are my first two albums back in the, uh, when MTV was showing videos. So, um, okay, everybody, thanks again for watching, and I will see you on the next video, and uh, that's it. Take care. That's a wrap for the National for me.